What is the induced fit hypothesis? And how do enzymes and substrates lead to the formation of products? And what's the whole point of enzymes anyway? Well, in today's video, we're covering A-level biology, enzymes. I'm gonna take you through enzyme structure, the factors that affect enzyme reactions, and also some exam questions at the end of the video to help you get the best grades possible. So stay tuned, guys. So let's have a look at AQA, A-level biology, enzymes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. So some key terms, first of all. Enzymes are globular proteins that act as biological catalysts. They speed up chemical reactions without getting used up in the process. And a key example of this is amylase. Substrates or substances acted upon by an enzyme by binding to the active site. So an example of a substrate could be starch, and that would bind to the active site of amylase. Products are substances produced as a result of a chemical reaction. Now, an example could be maltose. Starch is broken to maltose by the enzyme amylase. Activation energy is the energy required for a reaction to take place. Lock and key. This is a simplistic model of enzyme action. The induced fit. This describes how the active site changes shape when the substrate binds. And this is more of an A-level explanation for enzyme action. Catalyst. This is something that speeds up a reaction without getting used up. Metabolism, all of the chemical reactions taking place in the body. Active site, that's a specific functional region of an enzyme which the substrate binds to. Enzyme substrate complex. Please, guys, if you're answering a question on enzymes, make sure you say enzyme substrate complex. It comes up in the AQA mark schemes all the time. So this is where the enzyme and the substrate are temporarily bound and they form this complementary complex. Kinetic energy, the movement energy, higher temperatures lead to more kinetic energy, denature. This is when the active site changes shape and is no longer complementary to the substrate. Optimum, this is the condition where an enzyme will catalyze reactions the fastest. Inhibition means to stop or slow. Competitive inhibitor competes with the substrate for the active site and temporarily binds and blocks the active site. A non-competitive inhibitor binds to an alternate allosteric site which changes the shape of the active site permanently. So it doesn't bind to the active site, it binds to a position on the enzyme other than the active site called the allosteric site. So what are enzymes? Well, enzymes are biological catalysts that speed up chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy. This means that reactions can take place at lower temperatures. Enzymes have a specific active site, which is the functional region. And key examples include amylase, maltase, catalase, DNA polymerase, and many of the others you can see listed below. Now, this is a graph representing the amount of energy required for a reaction and we can see that with the enzyme, the blue line, the amount of energy required is far lower than without the enzyme. So the activation energy is reduced. So enzymes help to form bonds by holding substrate molecules together. And that overcomes repulsion between molecules, those intermolecular forces. And number two, enzymes catalyze breakdown by putting strain on the bonds within a substrate. So they reduce the amount of energy required to break the bond by placing strain upon it. So next of all, enzymes have a specific tertiary structure. The tertiary structure of an enzyme gives it an active site with a specific structure that is only complementary to one type of substrate. The primary structure of a protein determines its tertiary structure. And see my video on proteins for more information on this, but basically, Amino acids have variable R groups and the different sequences of amino acids will lead to R groups being in different positions. If the active site changes shape, meaning it's denatured, it will no longer be able to form that keyword enzyme substrate complexes. Temperature breaks hydrogen bonds and pH extremes break ionic and hydrogen bonds. So the induced fit model next of all. Well, here we can see represented in blue the enzyme. In yellow, we've got the active site or gold. 
and the substrate is the triangle above it. So the specific and complementary substrate binds to the active site of the enzyme, forming an enzyme substrate molecule. The substrate binding changes the shape of the active site in the enzyme substrate complex. Finally, the products are then released. So the binding of the substrate leads to a change in the structure of the active site. So think more hand in glove rather than lock and key. And this puts strain on the bonds within the substrate molecule, therefore lowering the activation energy required to break the bond. The lock and key model was an earlier proposal where the shape of the substrate was precisely fitted to the active site. But the limitation of this is that the enzyme is not a fixed rigid structure, so the induced fit model is now more widely accepted. Now the effect of pH on enzyme action. Well, we can see that enzymes have an optimum pH represented by the peak in the middle. Now the rate of reaction catalyzed by an enzyme will increase as the pH gets closer to the enzyme specific optimum value. Too far away from the optimum value, the OH- and H plus ions will break ionic and hydrogen bonds, and that will denature the tertiary structure of the enzyme. Pepsin has an optimum pH of 2, where most others in the body have an optimum pH of 7, which is why we need to neutralize acid using bile. Now let's look at the effect of temperature on enzyme action next of all. So higher temperatures increase the kinetic energy, which means enzymes and substrates are more likely to collide, leading to successful collisions between enzyme and substrate and more enzyme substrate complexes. Now this will therefore increase the rate of reaction until the optimum temperature has been reached. After the optimum temperature, the vibrational energy from this increased kinetic energy from the high temperature could break bonds such as hydrogen bonds and denature the enzyme. Now let's look at the effect of concentration next. So an increased substrate concentration increases the rate of enzyme catalyzed reactions until all of the active sites are occupied. And this point where all of the active sites are occupied is referred to as the saturation point. And you'll see a link between that and the hemoglobin unit. Now an increased enzyme concentration will increase the rate of reaction until the amount of substrate becomes limiting. And the more enzymes and substrate molecules there are, the greater the chance of a successful collision. So let's look at inhibition next. Well, competitive inhibitors bind to the active site, so they compete for the active site, and they block the active site. Now we could see that in the left bottom diagram, where the inhibitor binds to the active site and the substrate can no longer bind. Now, increasing the concentration of substrate will still increase the rate of reaction here. Non-competitive inhibitors, next of all, they bind to the allosteric site, which is a site away from the active site, as we can see in the bottom right diagram, and that's going to alter the shape of the active site, meaning the substrate is no longer complementary. And here, increasing the concentration of substrate will not increase the rate of reaction. And we can see the graph at the top right, rate of reaction on the Y, and substrate concentration on the x-axis. Now with a normal enzyme, we'll have a steep increase in rate of reaction as the substrate concentration increases until we get closer to the saturation point, and at which point it will then plateau once all of the active sites are being occupied at the maximum rate. Now with a competitive inhibitor, we'll have a slower increase because we've got competition there, and therefore the substrate can't always bind to the active site, but with more substrate molecules, there's more chance. Now with a non-competitive inhibitor, it'll plateau much earlier because the active sites of the enzymes get changed and therefore the enzyme's no longer functional. So let's move on to some exam practice next of all. Question one, explain how an enzyme's active site speeds up the rate of reaction. And this is worth three marks. So pause the video here and I'll go through the answer. So the answer, is that one mark, it lowers the activation energy. For a second mark, the active site will change shape after binding to the substrate in the induced fit. And you get a third mark for saying that the enzyme substrate complex causes bonds to form or break by placing strain on them. So this is going into detail about how the active site speeds up the rate of reaction. So you can see that AQA 
wants you to know about activation energy. It wants you to know about the induced fit model. And it wants you to know about the enzyme substrate complex causing bonds to form or break by placing strain upon them. Question two, explain how competitive inhibitors decrease the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. So the answer is that competitive inhibitors have a similar shape to the substrate. That will get you one mark because we've got the semicolon there. A second mark is for saying it will bind to the active site. And you can get a third mark for saying this prevents the formation of enzyme substrate complexes. So guys, I hope you got a lot from this video today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if this provided you some value. Drop in the comments what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next one.